Hello, Jacob Dobson here with another demonstration in Photoshop. Today we'll be doing a digital painting self-portrait. This self-portrait will be displayed with other portraits similar to it. And so I want some consistency among the different uh, images of uh, faces. So I've created a grid here with two red dots to align the pupils to grab some consistency. All right, to get started, I'm going to grab uh, the photograph that I'll be using today for reference. This image is um, large enough to get into a lot of details to see hair, uh, eyebrows, eyelashes, and we want to make sure it's big enough, but, um, but we don't want any distortion. So we had to hold the camera back at least six feet to get no distortion, but to get that much um, proper perspective, non-distortion, you have to stand five back five or six feet, but that also causes you to lose resolution. So the best camera to use for this particular portrait is something with a telephoto lens. So as we lay this image onto the um, uh, canvas here, we want to uh, pull it around and align it as best we can. Now this might require a little bit of rotation if we need to do that. Hold the cursor around the corner of the image over here and do a slight rotation like so. Getting closer here. So as we get it pretty close um, to that grid, uh, we'll go ahead and push enter here for our return. And uh, as soon as we have that alignment with the red pupils, then we'll go ahead and turn that grid off. We won't need that. Uh, to stare into those red demon eyes anymore. So let's go ahead at this point and um, work on what we call the base layer. As you can see over here in the far right corner, we have several layers I've gone ahead and created and labeled. This will make it easier for later down the road when I'm trying to get the uh, corrections or adjustments, I can pretty much easily go to where I need to go. And if there's any problems, I'm not ruining other work on the other layers. So it's a good uh, practice to implement. All right, so with this, um, we're going to start with the base layer. That will start um, with using a brush tool. So I want to explain a little bit about this brush tool. The brush tool um, that we'll be using for this demonstration is um, pretty much the standard brush that comes by default with this. Um, we aren't going to get too much in custom brushes for this demonstration. Um, but for the hardness, we want to bring the hardness of this brush pretty far down. And um, for this particular uh, base layer, we're going to have the opacity up to 100%. For this demonstration, we'll mostly be working with um, the hardness down and the opacity up and, and adjust them later on when we do other layers. So that's pretty much uh, what I want to do for the brush today to keep this first digital painting experience as simple as possible. All right, to get started, what we're creating is here a base layer. The base layer, we're going to use a very large brush. We're just doing large swatches of areas of color to act as the mortar between paint strokes. So, for example, if our paint strokes are being laid down and we've got white gaps, you know, in between um, the paint strokes from the canvas below, then uh, this will act as the mortar or the filler, if you will, between those paint strokes. So this is going to be really simple. Uh, we're going to use the eyedropper tool as well. That is the on the Mac an option key uh, that we'll grab. And as you can see, as I move that eyedropper tool holding down the option key and clicking, you'll see that this little palette over here on the left changes based on where I'm clicking. So um, we'll use that multiple times. Uh, a minute in this uh, pra in this painting practice. So here we go. We're going to start over here. Uh, we have full opacity, so everything we're laying down here is pretty solid and thick. Um, we're just going across this whole thing. As you can see, it's very large. Um, we're not interested in getting into any uh, um, specificity at this stage. We're work, you know, with sculpture, painting, drawing. Um, no matter what the, the practice may be, we want to work from general to specific, from large shapes to small, from, um, you can always use Control-Z when you make a mistake, 
um, or from large to general or large to specifics. So here we are just um, grab the wrong thing. I want didn't want to grab that. I want to grab the just the general base colors here going on. You know, like the little smaller brush so we get into not too much smaller. going to see here in just a moment how good we've done in terms of uh, covering the op the area completely now with any painting you do and this is for true for oil painting colors start off very much like this very broad very general generalized nothing specific and it feels just awful it feels like you've done everything wrong and uh, start losing self-esteem and confidence in your ability to finish this painting. Please understand that all uh, sculptures, paintings, oil paints, acrylics start off with this kind of broadness and lacking in detail. It feels like there's no specificity to give you any kind of anchor or direction. Just understand that that's normal and not to get too concerned about that. All right, so this generally gets us in the right ballpark. Now we're gonna move on to this skin layer and uh, we're going to turn uh, this base layer off. We're going to turn it back on later. You'll see uh, why in a minute. But right now we've turned off the base layer. We're moving to the first skin layer. And uh, why do I use different skin layers? Um, it's important to, um, I think, to have lots of layers, well, a couple of layers for skin, a couple of layers for eyebrows. You'll see why in just a moment. Um, it allows us to create depth and it allows us to work faster and broader without worrying about going over other things. So um, that's one of the reasons. Okay, so for starters, we're just going to grab again the paintbrush and we're going to make this paintbrush much smaller. Uh, we're going to get in and uh, kind of do small paint strokes to begin with. Um, this uh, There's lots of methods and I'm not suggesting in any way that smaller paint strokes are better or, or versus larger. Uh, I definitely see the advantages to both of those. I think for this particular practice to help students to really slow down and to judge color and a, at a s smaller pace, I think this exercise, since we're tracing a photograph, it's good to go with small paint strokes. So uh, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to use the eyedropper tool here. And we're just going to grab color and just start painting. Like so. We're going to cover small areas at a time, and this is going to really push our patience. A lot of us are maybe not used to working on a project that may take hours to do and such a and small amount of payout. But I tell you, it'll teach you a lot of patience and, and open you up to greater projects in the future. Great projects just take time, and if anything, this thing's going to teach patience. So here we are just kind of covering this area. You can see there's quite a bit of variation uh, in my... Uh, skin here and got a lot of freckles and things that change it every once in a while so we're gonna change as we go now let me show you what this looks like so far just to give you a taste if we turn this off uh, this photograph layer you can see I'm not doing such a good job of keeping my paint strokes close together but against that white see how dark it feels I see color can be quite deceiving so um, uh, just be patient with that as you go, and trust me, it'll work out. The side dropper tool is doing all the work for you. All you're doing is just following it. So we'll turn the photograph back on and uh, try again this time. Maybe I'll bring the uh, opacity down just a little bit. Um, you'll see why in just a moment. That allows me to kind of utilize the, some of the base uh, color or the layer to help create the color. And I'm going to also bring my hardness up just a little bit. So... Uh, my edges aren't so soft. All right, here we go. We're going to pull this in. 
as you can see here. And uh, that allows us to get in here and do the details. So as you as you pull this together, um, you know, without the base uh, layer there, it looks pretty bad. But if you bring the base layer in, you can start to see how the base layer fills in some of those gaps and fills it in in between. Um, so one thing I like to show you now is how to do work with eyebrows or and eyelashes and hair of that kind. And ideally, you're working with a pressure sensitive stylist uh, on a digital painting tablet like a Wacom or some other like an iPad with the uh, with the eye pencil. But um, if you're not equipped with any of that equipment, um, then this is the next uh, one of the things you can do. Uh, bring the paint brush down to a very small brush and then pull it into um, uh, the eyedropper here and just start painting right over the eyebrows one at a time. Now, eyebrows don't assume that they're coming in one color. Um, take your time to go over them with the specificity that they deserve. Real slow. There you go. And I'm going to show you how bad this looks right off the start. So, oops, I did that on the skin layer. I forgot to bring it up here to the eye layer, but you'll get the idea when I turn this um, photograph off. You can see the eyebrows don't look so hot right against the white, but when you step back and zoom out, it'll look a lot better, trust me. You're just going to have to be patient um, as you work on this project. It just takes time. Um, as you can see, I'm going to throw you over here to another demonstration I've done earlier. Um, this tool here is uh, helpful. Um, to see kind of like what it looks like after a while. You're going to use the eyedropper tool when you're doing like the irises. There's like lots of depth to the eyes. And so when you're working on it, I like to bring down the opacity a lot more than this. Uh, let's, let's work on softer edges here. And we're going to pull this in just like so. So um, this is a demonstration that just takes time. And I'm just showing you that with this piece right here. And you just go over it layer by layer by layer and uh, be patient with it. I promise you it'll come together. You just have to be patient as you go. And um, just don't be discouraged. Those first few hours are going to be painful and brutal. It's going to look terrible. Um, I promise that it'll work out for you. And I uh, wish you the best of luck with this project.